to uh, take a little bit of a different tack on my commentary today. And as uh, Peter said, as I've done now three IPCC, I presented the carbon cycle at least twice to the UK community. And I'd like now to offer some thoughts about where I see the IPCC sits in time and how it could evolve in the future. And I'm going to start here. I don't know if you uh, realize just how unique our situation is at the moment. This is the world population in billion people stretched over a 3,000 time, a year time axis. It's not very long. And yet if you look at the time when most policy makers were born, it's here when there was 3 billion on the planet. At that time, uh, the resources were practically unlimited, or at least they felt like it. And here in 2014, 7 billion on the planet, uh, we're uh, witnessing really, uh, I, I guess what we could say, the beginning of the end of the transition. And there are people in this room who will be alive when we're at peak population. And I might even be able to be there myself with a little bit of luck. <laughs> um, <clears throat> there are steps that we need to make in this transition to achieve um, two things in particular. One is secure food and the other one is uh, secure stability in our society. And uh, stabilizing the climate is one of those steps, uh, but it's proven quite difficult so far in spite of the importance of climate change and the, and the, and the, and the clearer and clearer information coming out of the IPCC. And in my view, reflecting on this, I think that one of the important issues that we have is that policymakers that take decisions on climate change have multiple priorities. They don't come at the table with climate change as being their focus, but in the UK, they have priorities that concern cheap energy for the people, meeting the EU uh, water directives, which are very costly for water pollution, uh, priorities about uh, ensuring flood protection for the UK people in addition to priorities of climate change. So in my view, one of the very beneficial steps that we could make is to start to see the natural environment with these multiple priorities and to start to integrate a little bit more in our physical understanding, also an understanding of the managing of the systems of, uh, 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 and the environment. Uh, and with doing this, then we would provide multiple uh, uh, co-benefits and multiple uh, aspects of changes in environment and the uh, delivery of ecosystem services that could perhaps uh, help a policymaker make decisions that are, yes, in the interest of stabilizing the climate because they also help in the, in the flood protections, because they also help the policymakers meet their multiple uh, um, constraints. Uh, one example that where I think that we could actually apply this approach is in our understanding of the terrestrial biosphere. We have made a lot of progress in the IPCC through the time, through the various IPCC, particularly uh, the last report in constraining the fluxes and particularly the fluxes of carbon in and out of the terrestrial vegetation. But we've been a bit stuck in my view, trying to separate uh, this, uh, the right hand side natural vegetation from as you move to the left, the multiple influences of deforestation, land management, agriculture, Culture, agricultural transitions, going from pastures to, to cropland and so on, and all the way to uh, 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 human settlements. And all throughout these various ecosystems, you have ecosystems that provide services, but we've not completely been able to quantify how is our ecosystem modified if rather than being a primary forest, it is now a secondary forest, or a managed forest, or a forest that is a, 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 a unique species rather than having a large biodiversity. So I think in terms of our, our biogeochemical understanding, having a closer influence or a closer look at the managed versus uh, the uh, natural uh, system and how they interact would be really beneficial. Um, 
on the carbon cycle, uh, one uh, big advances that we have made this time around is that we have been able to quantify the uncertainties in the carbon cycle. And drilling into these uncertainties in the chapter six on carbon and other biogeochemical cycles that I was involved in, we have really drilled down that soil carbon is the major source of uncertainty into the future. And soil carbon is actually the uh, location where all the services or many of the services that are important for human, particularly food production, uh, are uh, originate. So I think uh, drilling down on this uncertainty and having uh, a, a more ec a extensive look at it in terms of management and non-management uh, ecosystems would be uh, really necessary at this stage going into the future. Similarly, uh, the functioning of the ocean still poses uh, some challenges. Uh, Thomas has mentioned earlier that we have now uh, balanced the heat budget, we have balanced the sea level rise budget, we have also balanced the carbon budget. There is no more a carbon sinks for those of you who were around in the 1990s. <laughs> we know where the carbon comes in and out, but we know this mostly on a decadal basis. So where we have uh, gaps in our understanding is looking at how this variability unfolds in front of us, particularly the decadal variability and the annual variability, so that at least as it unfolds, we can explain it, if not uh, project it into the future or as it comes. Uh, <clears throat> In our chapter, we have, uh, 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 we have uh, made explicit the issues that are brought uh, forward by ocean acidification. Uh, but ocean acidification, with uh, many other impact, uh, our knowledge is fragmented. We have a, a, a good understanding of what the physical aspects are. Uh, we know how ocean acidification will change at, with different levels of, future, uh, of, of uh, CO2 in the future with high confidence. We know that surface waters in the Arctic will, in regions, become uh, uh, corrosive to aragonite in parts of the Arctic and parts of coastal e ecosystem within a decade, no matter what happens to the CO2. And, and uh, that this will also become corrosive to aragonite within one to three decades in parts of the Southern Ocean. However, how bad of a problem is this? Is this a problem that is similar to the effects of ozone on terrestrial biosphere, thus reducing productivity by about a quarter? Or is it an effect that is as bad as complete desertification? And actually, at the moment, uh, the relevance of these impacts for society are, in my view, not really clear. We need to be much more, much clearer, much more quantitative about how highlighting these impacts and how they uh, then influence on society. And because these are so, so important, I think this is the stage we are in. We, climate change exists, human influence is dominant. What does it mean for society has to be really very much clearer. And I think going forward, I would see a lot of benefits to have much more interactions and closer involvement of the impacts uh, uh, quantification or assessment within working group one, all the way from uh, the uh, uh, CMIP, so the coupled model intercomparison project that Thomas highlighted, all the way to the reporting itself. I would see very well the physics and impacts on the one hand and the adaptation and mitigation on the other hand. So the, the scientific basis and the solution uh, in concert so that these can be assessed together. Uh, <clears throat> finally, uh, the big issues that uh, we need to understand is the functioning of the carbon climate society interactions. Uh, Thomas has mentioned these numbers at the, uh, uh, in the low uh, part here. To me, one of the most satisfying steps that IPCC Working Group 1 has made is to make the carbon budget very clear. Uh, the um, metric of what is the 
uh, cumulative carbon budget that we can emit in the atmosphere if given a warming target is based on physical, very good uh, physical understanding. It is uh, simple and it is even elegant. And what we have uh, here uh, is uh, we have emitted, as Thomas ham has mentioned, emitted so far 535 gigatons of carbon, carbon budget below 2 degrees with a 50%, so a bit higher of a budget than Thomas mentioned with a likely of 820 gigatons of carbon. Now this budget is far less than the fossil uh, fuel resources and that means actually uh, one of the implications is there's no need to continue exploration because we have more fossil fuel uh, reserves, uh, resources already than we can burn if climate is to be stabilized uh, below two degrees. For us scientists, the more this information grows in importance, the more we're going to be challenged on these numbers. And you can see the range of the carbon emitted is very large, and it's large in part because we, don't, uh, we cannot quantify so precisely what was the carbon emitted through deforestation, for instance, and even less at the regional basis. The more we're going to be challenged on the 820 of the carbon budget that we have, what's the contribution of other greenhouse gases, of climate sensitivity, carbon feedbacks, and also what's the contribution of the different probability, how does this change with different temperature level. So we have to really keep a very careful eye on these numbers as a community to be able to defend them and to understand them better. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, common climate interactions that I mentioned here are nothing in complexity compared to the difficulty brought forward uh, by society in uh, this uh, triangle. Uh, the carbon budget will be news to many, but what does it take to uh, translate this knowledge into action? And that is, in my view, the real scientific challenge. Uh, <clears throat> The IPCC is quite an incredible mechanism. In no other aspects of science do we have such a concerted effort to clarify the evidence. <laughs> the way I see it, what's happened in the past, 20 years ago, we had a community that was disparate. The messages were uh, not completely coherent. Everything was uncoordinated. And over the, pa the, the course of the, of the IPCC assessments in the past 20 years, the community has they tuned their instrument. It's like we're in a band and everybody tunes their instrument. We've clarified our thoughts. We've clarified the concerns. We Really, the IPCC process has guided the research community to bring the elements that were needed to understand climate change and, it, and its implications for society. And as a result of this, when the IPCC AR5 comes out now we have a strong voice. Our situation is unique here not just because we're at the wake of the beginning of the end of the transition but also because we have a year and a half ahead of us before what could be a tipping point in society. Now, when you go to the concert, you don't see half the band getting up before the end and go sit in the room and watch the other half finishing the concert. What you see is the chords, you see the strings, you see the drummers, you see the singers, you see everybody coming out to the front of the room and singing in harmony as loud as they can. In this one and a half year that we have less, I can just about see it. So we have to focus. We have to focus on effort. We have to play in our band as much as we can, as loud and in focus as we can. We have to really be present on the scene for this full year and a half. We have to request help. People will help. Editors will help. Your boss will help. People want to uh, see change. And if we can do this and be strong enough, then the policymakers, when they have a decision to take, they will have to come with the flow because the desire to do something about climate change will be so strong. And when that tipping point in society comes, December 
2015 in Paris, then what I would really like to do is take the IPCC to the next level and use it as a mechanism to expand the evidence and include beyond climate change also assessments of global change so that the transition to sustainability that you see here that will happen in the next uh, few decades is supported by the best possible evidence. Thank you. <laughs>